the time. So when you watch someone else opening things, I think, <laughs> honestly, Smokey, I agree. I need to. Okay. I'll t I got to talk to Disastrotron. You can, can you open my heart? Oh, Dave. I got, I got the key. Um, hang on a sec. Is this? I just wanted to make sure that there wasn't, um, yeah, it is kind of like Christmas, right? There wasn't like an invoice under here. So this here, and yeah, it looks like there is, looks like there is an invoice. So give me just one second. Here's another, I'm going to just plug, I'm just going to plug dispatch super quick. When we pack, when we pack boxes, and especially if we know there's a streamer, we never will reveal personal information in the box. <laughs> We always make sure that everything's hidden and we put the shipping label on the bottom. Um, we even write on the bottom, this is the bottom, open the other side because we want to make sure that everything is like appropriately packed away and you're not doxing yourself by accident. Um, anyway, not that everyone should do that because it's just a box and they're appealing to like regular customers, not necessarily streamers. But I'm just saying it's like, that's a thing. Um, this is a devastating TKL PCB to replace the one that I annihilated with my ridiculous desoldering job last week. More on that later. My balder showed up today. I already had a build all ready to drop it, so it's already up and running nice. Oh, you just, um, you had like the PCB plate already set up. You just like, dude, how nice is it? How nice is that glow, right? This is a set of nice PBT black on white. This is not for me though. Um, somebody, I posted in the Winnipeg Discord, I'm like, yo, I need to order a, a Devastating. Does someone, want to sh does someone want to split shipping? And then I'll you know, bring some stuff in for you as well. And somebody did. So we've got a nice PBT black on white. Dice up PBT. Actually, and now that this is in my hand, I'm like, why didn't I, why didn't I buy one of these? Because I really need a black on white set. Um, keyboard KB says in my underwear watching Geo. I don't know how my life could get better, dude. I feel that way. I feel that way about streamers too, man. Like you're just like this is a good moment. This is a good moment in my life. Um, Pokerbit last week and you have the replacement. This shipping was incredibly fast. So I received three boxes. One of them was Canada Post, but it was in the city, so it was from Desk Hero to me. The other two were from. Um, either overseas, oh, I guess I received three, three shipments, overseas or across the country. And all of them were DHL. It was crazy. They were all here within like two days. Absolutely nuts. DHL was knocking out of the park this week. Okay, here's another box. Here is another box. Okay. The thank you on here is a nice touch. Who likes that? Who, who likes that? I have tape, um, but it doesn't say thank you. And I feel like, hmm, maybe it should. I kind of like that. I kind of like that Ash, Ash Keebs is like upping that politeness game, you know? Sorry, I was away. Uh, is that the canon key? Yes, it is the canon key order that I had. That's right. So we've got the... Um, We've got the black on white caps that are in there and they're already in. Uh, Juan Suazo says, Sub Geo, you saw my QK65 in Discord. I'm waiting for my GMK Blue Samurai that you got for 100. That I got for 100. I don't know if I did. Did I? DHL is worth the extra money, says Warthog. Had something shipped for me from Italy and was at my door in almost the middle of the US in three days. Yeah, it's sometimes it's it's a little crazy. Linear Clicks has a nice touch when you receive the package. Mm-hmm. Agreed. Mm-hmm. You think words should be facing in both ways? Yeah, I guess the tape is split down the middle with like half circle, ash keebs, like, right? They're going like half circle, ash keebs, half circle, like repeating and then half circle, thank you, half circle, thank you. So I guess that's what they did. I didn't think I did. I think I, I thought I only ordered one person keycaps unless I made a mistake. My bad, I got that blue samurai for 100. It's the base set, okay, yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, we talked about that, we talked about that. I remember, I remember. I'm like, oh my God, did I forget to order that for you? I felt so bad. Okay. 
Okay. Okay. Now, the last time we got a package from Ash Keebs, it was missing something. I reached out. They said they were going to take care of it. Now, this is a map. This is a map I was looking forward to. This is a map I was looking forward to. Oh, they didn't even ship yet? Damn. Okay. One of these is not for me. And unfortunately, none of them are for you guys. I'm so sorry. <laughs> these are not for giveaway. Although, desk mat giveaways would be good, right? Let's do that. H.E. Toasty says, change desk mat. Smart. Let's do that. Let's, let's redeem that right now. Shall we? Let's do it. I sounded a little... I had my Casey Kasem channeling there a little bit. All right, change your desk mat. Let's do that right now. Right? <laughs> For anyone that's old enough to remember that, nobody. Yo, cancerous. Yeah, I got that cold mat. Agreed. Okay, let's see. Let's see. Let's redeem again. <laughs> and ask Gio to change it back. You have a Pokebrit, you're just starting out. Oh, man, look at this. Okay, we're repping mech now on stream. Look at that. Look at that, look at that. Okay, let's see. Now everything needs to like stretch out just a little bit. Can I just go by felt? Hmm, you could, you could. And cut to a custom size, you could buy felt. You could. Keep in mind, felt has a lot of fibers on the bottom. So if you have a PVD polished weight, it might cause a little bit of abrasion. But like, la. Did you actually, dude? That's ridiculous, cancerous. This is actually ridiculous. Okay. Although I feel like now if we've got, like, hang on a sec. Hang on a sec. I, I know. Pokebrick, get this. Um, I actually was offered an archetype cap uh, by Mendax, but I said, you know what, you have to, because he's got it, um, and he actually received it direct from Mech, from archetype, the person. Um, but it's a B stock, so he's not allowed to like sell it or anything else. And I and I said, you know what, I'm not comfortable taking it, because I kind of know Mech a little bit, like not personally, but like through the community. I'm like, I don't want to take that. And then he sees it on my board and he's like, where'd you get that? You know? So just, I said, just ask him first and then whatever, but I would definitely put it on here. It's a, it's a Navy blue, um, archetype logo. Mm. So yeah, yes, yes, yes. Okay. The seven V comes in on Monday. Yo, that is so sweet. Okay. This is nice. Let's do something here though. Let's do something here. We're gonna take this. Oof. We're gonna we're gonna head over to our collection of keyboard stands, courtesy of Custom Niches, which I'll do a shout out for in just a second. We're gonna get ourselves a new board. So easy, so stable. I love it. One second. Let's do that. Let's do it. Okay. Boom. Now that. That is looking like something. Okay. Boom. That is looking like something. Okay. So now, this is a zero B limo on a single sleeve cable. So it's a little bit thinner, a little bit more svelte. Delicious. Okay. Oh man. Oh man. There we go. It's like midnight. This is like midnight, right? Matt and Cena, thank you so much. Thank you so much. Oh man, is this an F1? It is an F1. Um, this is the F1 that we did some work on and we ended up spring swapping twice. So the first one, oh man, my glasses. Um, one second, you see. Here. I don't have my new glasses, but I've got my old ones, so I'll put these on. <laughs> Kent mode, yeah. Boom. These are my old glasses. Where, where'd he go? Where'd he go? Um, okay, so the... Oh, he's here. He's here. There we go. What bottom is on that? This is an alu bottom. 
Um, and Matt, you know about the 722, obviously, the 722 drop. The cool thing about the 722 is that weight that's peeking through the back. It's making me think, you know. It's really, really making me think. Um, so, okay, and I, I just typed on it. I Every time I pull this out, I'm like, oh man, it's so good. Like, so, so good. The, um, just look at this. Just look at this board, look at this. Oh my God, I love it. Here. The, um, it's gonna be a cop, I think so. Cause like, even if I had to decide, then I'd have the choice between this F1, which I've already got with A grade platinum weights inside and alu outside, whatever, it looks great. Um, and then the 722. So like, we'll see, feels like it's worth. And then if, you know, worse comes to worse, then I can always uh, choose which one, if I can grab one. And if I can't, I've already got one. So it's like, it's not the end of the world. Um, but yeah, this board feels so nice. We did a spring swap. Um, F1 is GG. Loading this board, I'm telling you, is so nice. I did the... Oh, cancerous Yo, thank you so much for the sub, man. Appreciate that. Thank you, thank you for the tier one. Um, what is that TKL? Diabolical. This is Geonworks F1. Um, and this board in particular has OP blocks in it, which have been spring swapped uh, twice. Once I, I put in... Um, Gazoo 55 gram springs, but they were a little bit too light. And now this has a uh, Sprit M1 progressive uh, 60 gram springs. And it is very, very nice. Like this is just an absolute joy to type on for the most part here. Let's do a, let's do a quick test here. 122 gonna be a bloodbath. Yeah, 120 units gonna be a bloodbath, true. At the same time, man, there's a couple of big raffles coming up because there's Key Cult going to have a raffle in the next like week or two as well for that Navy, um, that new version of their unfinished bottom. Bottom, So we'll see. That's going to be a bit, just a bit interesting. Here, let's do this. Oops. I'm just going to pull this in here. Okay, like so. Let's give a quick listen. Anyway, um, I, I just love it. There's like a distinct like high pitched bottom out. Um, and then there's also like just, just a really nice sort of mellow bottom too. space bar. You know what? So here's here, this was a bit of an adventure for me. I started off with, um, you see Sarah key ceramic. Key. I did. I did see that. We talked about that a little bit last time on, I'm not sure if that was the way for me, but, um, I get it. Like if people are digging it, they're going to look pretty. That's for sure. Um, this was a bit of an adventure for me because I started off with TX stabs in the um, in the board because I'm like TX, let's do TX. I love them in my 7V. They sound fantastic. So I put I put it um, actually I put Duroc stabs in here to start, and I was like, oh, I can't get them like quite quite right. Let's swap out the space bar only for TX. Goes in solid as a rock as TX are known to be. But there was this like stem wobble in like a north south direction this way. Like if if I'm looking on the top of the board, it was like doing this. So when you push the key down, it would like wobble a little bit and then you'd hear it kind of rattle on the way up. And it was like, well, what is that noise? Like the stab wasn't making noise. The key cap was making noise on the upstroke. And it was like, what? This is like nonsense. Anyway, took it out and um Loading, I do, but I have to go to the shop. So if people are like, show us custom colored limos, I can go and get some. I have actually 
four unique colors on hand right now um, with more coming in. If people are like, yay, yeah, yeah, show us limos, let's do it, then I'll go get them. Um, uh, Rose Gold is one of the ones that I don't have but is coming. <laughs> Itherac, it wasn't because I even put one layer of tissue paper and like squeezed it on and the, the cap was hard to pull on and off. Um, it was actually something to do with the way that the stab was like whatever. Um, the board itself um, sounded so much better when I swapped it back to Duroc, made sure I filled the back, made sure there was no rattle in the... Um, it wasn't like that, Ithrak. Oh man, it was so different. I don't even know how to tell you. You'd like to see a blue one? One, I've got a light blue one. It's called Raspberry Blue, Cerakote H something. I can't remember, but it's a Cerakote um, color and I can get it. Um, anyways, when I replaced it back to Duroc and um, and swapped it out, it just ended up going back to this like creamy, um, you know, smooth sound. It's funny, I said that word, it came out of my mouth and I was thinking of the Bad Seed Tech video. Did you guys watch that this week? Did you guys see that Bad Seed Tech video? Did you see it? Bad Seed Tech had like a collab with like almost every major, almost every major uh, key streamer or key personality like Teja. Um, Alex was in there. Um, like Switch and Click, Apiary. Like everybody, all the, ev just everybody, right? And <laughs> then it came up with like, how do you define thock and clack and like whatever. And actually there were some people who had really good definitions, despite it was like, it was put together to be a bit of a meme video. I thought some of the, um, who was it? Key, I want to say it wasn't, oh man, it wasn't Key Bonbon. Bon. What was that guy's name? He had like a white background keyboard keyboard like uh, k-e-y-b-o-r-e-d i think um he actually to me had the best he had the best definitions did you guys would you agree like i felt like he was like yeah keyboard was doing it was like yeah he talked about like high end versus low end and like it was amazing like it was like oh yeah like this is like he's making sense just make a video with him explaining it he's clearly <laughs> clearly knows what's going on so um and i've watched keyboards youtube uh, YouTube videos in the past. So it's like, I knew who he was. I just never put a face to the, uh, to the name. Anyway, I thought he did a good job. Anyways, I just said creamy and I'm like, oh, that was the one nonsense word that everybody didn't like. And I'm like, hmm, why did I say that? <laughs> Stupid. Uh, it's called the lingo, lingo, lingo centric predicament. You can never codify standardized definitions of sounds. Yeah. Right. Agreed. Uh, are you planning on doing YouTube vids as well in the future or sticking to your streams? So that's a good question. I actually just enabled my as creamy as his fault. Yeah, agreed, agreed. But he's more artistic, right? So I would say Teha and I, I am not like Teha. I'm nowhere near what Nathan is doing, whatever else. But Nathan comes from a computer science background with a strong affinity for art artistic um, uh talent let's say right and i feel like that's probably the combination of his science brain and his like art brain coming together and that's probably why he used that word and i would say i'm kind of guilty of the same thing um minus my ability to photograph or design or whatever as nicely as he does but i try my best so it's like a aspirational aspirational comparison rather than an accurate one i'll say that hmm Okay, do you guys want to see uh, Creamy is just the sound of NK Creams by association rather than the sound of cream as in dairy smoothness? Agreed. Like, agreed. Um, and it was funny too because people were getting like uh, hung up on like the marbly sound. I'm like, it literally sounds like a bag of marbles. Who's going to clip that? It literally sounds like a bag of marbles with, you know, all of them kind of rolling around, um, rubbing against each other. That's what marbly sounds like to me. Um... But agreed, Snoop Wog, that's true. I also agree with that. I agree with that. Okay, um, so here's a quick question. I've got uh, I've got one more box to open up. You sound like a ba you sound like a bag of marbles. No, you. Um, sit back. Uh, so your VODs are now going on YouTube. I have uploaded a good portion of my VODs to YouTube. Um, they're all in private mode right now because 
I wasn't sure that anyone would actually want to watch them, and I wasn't sure that I was going to put them up. But they're there, uh, hidden at the moment. I was thinking about perhaps even recording some type tests. Like I've got like a side angle here. I probably need to clean up this desk or do something. I could get rid of this camera. I could adjust it just a smidge. I could do a type test. I'm not sure that anyone really cares to hear my keyboards in particular, but we could try. I need to work on some overlay graphics and stuff and like whatever, something like that, right? Um, okay, here's a question. Uh, I can open another box or I can go get uh, Lemos from the shop. Which would you guys prefer? Wow, all my comments going to be YouTube famous? Well, keep in mind, PokerBit, I don't have the chat on, um, I don't have the chat on the screen. So you'll be, don't worry, you'll be uh, absolved. Poll, okay. Poll. Um... Go, go, vote, vote, vote. Uh, why wouldn't we want to hear your keyboards? Uh, sorry, I mean, Sinvec, uh, I guess to be more specific, you may want to hear my keyboards. The, you know, the the some some odd number of you that are here probably have, you know, an interest. Por que lo, no lo dos? Uh, true, true. Let's go, Geo's Cables. Yo. Uh, polls, did I not do a poll? I thought I did. Lemos by a landslide? <sighs> All right. <laughs> I'll be right back. Okay, hang on, hang on. Hang on, let me get rid of this. I'll be right back. Sorry, just got back. What is the box? The box! Open the box! Okay, 11 to 5. I'm going to get Lemos. I'll be right back. That wasn't so bad for, for time. Let's see. Wait, hold up. Anyone familiar with the, about Debussy and a box? No, Debussy and a box. I don't know it. I don't know it. Or in the case of Family Guy about, oh, I don't know. I don't know enough Family Guy. That's why. Uh, Sinvex says, I finally got a 60% that might be pleasing enough to use that I actually might full adapt, which the Balter? The, like, the Balter Sinbad? Okay. So, the Balder, yeah. That's that's high praise. If Asmode comes, um, you'd probably love to hear it. Sometimes he shows up. Um, Mr. Asmode of Helheim Designs the uh, studio behind the Balder. Okay, so this is, this is so funny. I'm gonna open, so these two cases, um, 
these, this is, it's actually a silly amount of um, capital investment that's represented by these two boxes of styrofoam. <laughs> but I mean, you know, you guys know what the limos go for, generally speaking. Um, so we have like some inventory and some of it is still inbound. Um, so generally speaking, we have a fair number of, like these are the black, right? The black, I low key hate building the DZ60 flex, but damn, does it feel good to type on? Yo, we've got, um, right? So these are like, this would be a set for a right angle connector in black. You guys, no, this is black. Sorry, is it coming through green? What is that? Is that looking green or black? It should be black. Um, keyboard, they're expensive for a few reasons. Number one, they're not made for keyboard cables. They're not intended for keyboard cables. They, first of all, they're brass. So they have um, some inherent weatherproofing, um, waterproofing, etc., built into them. Thanks, Invec, for the confirm. Uh, no, no, sorry, Jerry. I see some green there. Oh, yes, there is a green one right here. Um, these are, so Mango, these are um, some colors that we've got. All the colors here are spoken for. I'm so sorry, because I order them on a commission basis. Uh, the exception to that is white, which I keep on hand, because typically if people are interested in like black or white cables, uh, then the white ones are, um, you know, kind of the way to go. And I keep quite a few of these on hand with, and also because, so I have one, two, three, sets of white but i also keep multiple of the device side connectors in stock as well because then if somebody comes in and they're like i'd like to get you know one of the pc side and i want one usb c and one usb whatever right then it allows them to change it up and i have them kind of on hand i do keep the white ones in some amount of stock and i also have five purple ones that are due i have a couple of rose gold I have six more black, which are inbound, five uh, dark green and five light pink. So that represents uh, quite a, again, like I said, quite a large capital investment. Um, when you think about the cost per component, <laughs> it's approximately 40 to $50 per half. Um, so uh, generally speaking, it's, uh, yeah, it's quite pricey. Uh, that's a US, US quote. Uh, so I also have, uh, we've got a silver one here. Um, again, right angle, so you can make a silver right angle connector, right? So this is the this is the source side, and this goes out and basically connects into here like so. Line up the pin, the dots like so. Uh, whoops, hang on a sec. Oh, it's got this has got a four pin. That was my bad. It's got a four pin uh, connector inside, and this is a five pin. Uh, Host socket. That's the problem. Give me one sec. See if I have a four pin host. Uh, I think I'm just about out, which is part of the problem. Four, four, four. Yeah, no, I need, I need to order a couple of additional, um, you can order everything in a, in a limo connector is, um, why not have, why do you do custom per cable? Oh, these are, um, so these ones, for example, here's, um, this is called parakeet green. This is showing up quite a bit lighter because of the amount of light that's, um, being reflected onto it. Uh, yeah, Mango, these are so expensive. It's almost laughable. Like this connector itself is $100, just half. <laughs> like it's kind of nonsense. I'm rounding a little bit for effect. I think it's actually 80, but still it's nonsense. Mm -hmm. um, so I have two because these are, these are um, notoriously impossible to get your hands on. So if I don't keep at least one or two, the, the odds of somebody ever actually ordering these are so low. Um, but if I don't, it's like a 12 to 16 week lead time um, with sometimes going as high as 20 weeks. So if I don't have them on hand, I, I just won't get them, right? Sorry, I was saying, why are they so expensive? One of them, some, they're made out of brass. So the material itself is expensive. Um, the shielding, so let me do a breakdown. I think I've done this for you guys before, but I'll do it again. So the breakdown of a cable is as follows. Um, so they get used in all kinds of things, mostly medical, tell you the truth, uh, because of their reliability and also in um, other audio video um, type applications. So call it nut is the back. Basically what happens is this has a threaded um, 
threaded sort of sleeve on the outside, like so. You can see those threads. They go onto the back side of the housing, okay? Call it nut in the back. Call it, cable call it. The call it um, grips the wire, and in our case, because we custom sleeve them, it also grips the sleeving. It's got this turbine cut pattern around the around the outside. So when the call it nut goes on the outside of the call it, the tighter it squeezes, the more those clamps actually grab the hobby, or grab the hobby, sorry, grab the cable. <laughs> Pokebrit's statement about outside of this hobby was like drilled into my brain. So call it nut and call it. The call it grips the cable on the sleeving. The call it nut is what um, squeezes the call it onto the back of the housing. Okay. Now, in addition, there's a notch here on the front of the, of the call it nut, right? This little notch. The interesting thing about that is inside the cable housing is the, whoop, is the um, the actual connector itself, which has the contact points inside of it, like so, and this additional metal shielding, which has this locking tab on the outside, right? So the locking tab goes into the notch on the collet. So the collet nut presses against the collet, grabs the wire. The notch and the, um, sorry, I guess the socket and the notch go together to prevent them from turning away from each other, which, mean, which means the tighter you do it, this is gonna actually bump up against and prevent it from spinning around the wire because you don't want it to spin around the wire, right? Now this piece here, the shell, um, connects to the terminals here, the actual solder contact points here, via this tab on the front. So this little hole on the top gets, sorry about my thumb, uh, gets put onto the, the top of the uh, connector and now this won't turn either. So this locks, that locks, that locks, and then you go. And then this actually goes into the outside. And if you look deep, deep inside here, if we can, there is actually, there's a locking notch there too, which prevents it from socketing, uh, sorry, which prevents it from spinning around. Can you see better from the other side? Here, you probably can. There, you see that, that tab right there, right on the top side? It's like indented just a little bit that is where this locking tab goes on the front. Sorry, this one here on the front, right? So basically everything aligns. You can see they're all in line. Everything lines up and then everything locks together. Now the precision which, which, with which these are machined is part of it. Uh, the heft, like I said, they're brass. So those, there's some implicit, um, you know, um, like I said, weatherproofing and, and moisture proofing and stuff like that. And then the last thing too, where the heck is my, can't use this one. White, 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 white. Uh, oh, no, I'm out of the, okay. Anyways, here. The way that these um, locking, I guess, pins, these leaves actually work is also pretty, um, pretty well engineered so that when you pull the collar back, they actually retract. So you can see them like pulling into the sleeve, like so. And all of that sort of, the way that all of that mechanical stuff works just means they just snap together and pull apart so, so smoothly, right? There you go. Um, more keyboard streams, the more keyboards I want. Yeah, that's how it goes. They're expensive because they look like little lightsaber hilts? No, so it's mostly just the quality of the machining, um, you know, the I guess the, the general precision and the materiality. So there's lots of uh, cable connectors out there like Aviators or YC8 or any any number of those things, but generally speaking, um, once you feel once you feel what a limo feels like, you're like, ah, okay, I get it, right? It's sort of like, um, you know, you can get a keyboard made out of anything you're like, yeah, whatever. Okay, this one and this one, they're both made out of aluminum. What's the difference? Well, there's most definitely a difference, I would say, once you get uh, once you get kind of clued in, right? Okay. Now, uh, just to, to, so we're talk a little bit about colors. We've got a few colors on hand, like I said. So we've got white, blue, green, and pink right now on hand. Uh, the white and the pink are available. Uh, if anyone's like, oh, I want a white one or I want a pink one. This pink one is actually the same one that Disastrotron has on his Limo cable. And I'd say the only difference between, this is called raspberry blue. Raspberry blue. 
and this is called Parakeet Green, this is Bright White, and this is Sig Pink. Smoky, I don't have any yellow ones on hand. Uh, there is a darker blue. So one, this is all just Cerakote. So you can actually, you can literally look up the Cerakote color codes, and I'll show you guys how to do that in just one sec. And you're like, I want that one. Um, and odds are, if it's a fairly standard color, we'll be able to do it up relatively simply. The only challenge is, is if it's something that is not used all that often and I can't piggyback on something else getting painted, then I have to pay for the entire run out of my pocket. And then um, that's another thing. Technique, I don't have Uptown Gold here in the office. I 100% have some in the shop. So if you want, just shoot me a note on Discord and say, I'm looking for this combination and I'll just send you a picture of the cable set up and you can decide if you like it. Um, you know, I can put whatever you want underneath of Uptown Uptown Gold, but I do have it. Um, I do have it on. Whoops, on hand. I do keep it stocked because uh, it's generally a pretty good color. Okay. Um, anyways, that was the little limo demonstration, which we've done once or twice before. But those are those are the colored limos that we currently have on hand. Um, let's do this. So if I do this, does that work? Yay! Okay. So let's go to, here we go. So if you literally go here, which is, I'm gonna show you, right here. Uh, how close is the shade of pink to the black cherry Cerakote? Penguin, Penguin, this one is not black cherry, but the, the limos are coated using Cerakote brand ceramic coating. So if you're like, oh, I want a red, um, basically you can come to the website, click on reds right here. And you're like, oh, I want black cherry, which is code. Um, so I, I posted the link. Uh, and this is code H319. Thumbs up. You say, Geo, I'm interested in a cable that's, uh, or limo that's coded in H319. Make it happen. There we go. Um, super cool. Um, Similarly, let's say we're like, oh, we're looking for blues. Then you just uncheck the color red, click on blue. It's going to come up. Now we want a heat cure. So we would click oven on the cure, which is going to bring up the H series for almost everything. And then now we can pick the blue that we like. Now this one was blue raspberry. So it was this color. Um, H is H the better. H is just what's used by the paint shop that I'm working with. So you can see this was the way that it came out. This is blue raspberry, right? So you'd see here, Xbox controller, water bottle. Um, and then lots of times this is used in combinations. So this is like, right? This is like a bit of a rainbow effect, whatever. You know, you can see it kind of within a few other contexts, right? Anyway, this is blue raspberry. Um, Wonder if the rose gold is custom plated by Dispatch or Limo Original. No. So HC Toasty, um, rose gold, Limos only come in two colors, silver and black from the factory. Um, the way we know that is if we click on the B connector series, which is what we use uh, here. You notice this looks similar, right? And we'll we'll open up the Unipol catalog, right? So it's like, oh, let's order from Limo Direct. Let's see what Limo actually offers. And you'll notice this is from uh, Limo.com. If you're interested, I doubt you guys are super keen to decipher how this catalog works. But basically, if we go to page 13, uh, we're gonna get to this. Now this here is the B series. It tells us all of the different adapter types. We use FGG and PHG. So that's a straight plug and a free socket. That's how we do it. And then you'll notice here, you've got a part numbering system. So once you come in here, you can determine all of the different parts and how you need them. So FGG 1B306. So 306 is a six pin configuration of a 1B series, one size, which is a three point whatever to 5.6 or six point whatever millimeter wire. Um, and then FGG is just the free socket. So it's this particular model, right? FGG with this uh, backing nut, FGG with that one, et cetera, et cetera, right? You can pick the style or shape that you like. Then you've got clad, which is basically the finish. And um, right here, we'll click on the, where is it? Uh, da, 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 da. Variant, probably the variant. 
no, that's only for the call-in nut, my bad. Back up here, there's a way to actually show you if it comes in silver or chrome. I'm just trying to see where it is. Housing, C, here it is, uh, page 64. Uh, so you can get basically here, depending on the ones that you uh, have access to for B, T, and K, you can get brass, uh, which is either chrome or nickel, uh, and then black chrome on the outside. So C, K, and N. This nickel and this chrome look almost almost the same, but you can't get a raw brass. Um, you you can't get a raw brass finish from what I've been told by the rep. So you can get black chrome, regular chrome, and I suppose you could get nickel, but I've never tried it. So um, that's basically it. And also, it looks like the nickel ones are special order. So in our particular case, it's not necessarily the thing. So yeah, they're just like super rugged is basically the thing. So, you know, um, Snoop Wog is talking about military and scientific. Totally. It's just an extremely rugged, rugged, very reliable, quick disconnect, multipole connector. That's it. Um, and that's basically the whole point of it. Now, anytime we do a, um, here's something interesting to note. Whenever we do a color coded limo, You'll notice that there are flat surfaces here on the connector, which is what you want. You want that. There's a flat surface right here and then another flat surface on the collet nut, right? Now what that's actually for is to apply the Limo. They ha Limo has a uh, custom branded wrench set, which actually could go on the connector and you can refit to the point of like it's never coming apart. We do do that for our black and silver connectors because we want them to be as tight as possible without rotating at all. Um, and it does apply about a semi, like maybe a fractional, either quarter to half millimeter shine along the edge of the connector. You'll see it. The reason why we do that is it makes them insanely durable and really, really hard to move. You can force a twist if you really give her, but we don't recommend that. And when we uh, we have a little card now that we include in the box, which says, this is how to take care of your cable, scan the QR code, takes you to the website. Um, for the color coded ones, we don't do that because it'll actually scratch the color coding off. So they're hand tightened uh, by me. Um, they're relatively close, but they don't have the same torque as if I was using the wrench set. So it's kind of like you bought a ceramic coated one, you know, kind of be extra super careful with it because I don't want to scratch the surface with the wrenches. Um, it's hand tightened um, by a guy who can do like 80 push-ups. So like generally speaking, it's not going to move. But if <laughs> if you really try to twist it, you will break it. You will tr you will absolutely break it. Um, anyway, there you go. Okay. Very nerdy. Probably, probably 10 times more information than anyone cared to know about cables and limo connectors in particular but there you go okay and, and ku is like wait you can do push-ups i'm in do do push-ups you got it you got it give me one second take a sip mm. okay well, let's do some push-ups Now, on that, on that note, next up, pistol squats. <laughs> on that note, it's funny. Um, so dispatch has gone through <laughs> solid push-up, just like those level cables. Preach. Um, dispatch has gone through like two, we're on second gen now, I would say. We did, I'm gonna take my glasses off, <laughs> sorry. Um, you can redeem and put them back on, but they're bugging my nose because these are my old glasses. Um, so dispatch is in gen two. So gen one, which is probably only about the first four months was using a different USB-C housing. 
and the new ones are much stronger. So, so um, anyone that had purchased within the first whatever, um, almost everybody had been reached out to. I said, if you'd like, you can send your cables back. I will um, do a quick repair. We'll swap out the end, make sure they're kind of industrial strong and then send them back out to you. For the most part, anyone that's gone on Gen 2 has not required a repair. So um, fingers crossed, generally really good. And I was just thinking about that as I was doing push-ups because it's like, if you try to rotate, pry apart or otherwise remove the USB-C housing on, this, on the new ones, like you can literally like try to pull them as hard as you can with pliers and it doesn't come apart. So they're much, much stronger, um, which is fantastic. So, okay, let's open. We had another box. Let's do that. Let's do that. I'm gonna put these over here, way out of the way. And there we go. Yay, box. Okay. Okay, I just turned on um, chill music tonight. I had some like deep house, whatever else last time and it was good, uh, but I just, I really wanted it. I wanted it relaxing tonight. <laughs> so if you guys want the music changed, let me know, but this is what I was feeling. Okay, oh, spoiler alert, spoiler alert with my address information right on the top. Address information right on the top. Why, why? Put the address information in the bottom, upside down, so no one can see it. Okay, ready? Oh. 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 Look. Snoopwog, just so you know, um, we are doing custom made uh, audio now, including XLR and mini XLR. It's gonna go up on the site. Um, I was supposed to go up on Thursday, but um, I missed uh, a, there's a delivery that did not arrive and um, it's going to be coming early next week. How's your Australia shipping? Uh, I think it's like, 10 to 20 at most. They're all custom sleeved. We're using uh, Mogami core, four core wire for XLR. So it's two cores per pole and um, Nutri connectors for everything. So, yeah. Just saying Snoop Wog, you send me a note, dude. <laughs> um, yeah, like the, um, we're doing similar to what we're doing with the uh, USB cables. We're only using what's generally considered to be the best of everything. Um, you can get more expensive wire, but generally speaking, uh, Mogami is kind of the top. So like generally, right. When we're using gold, we're using Mogami gold. Um, I can get Mogami platinum, but that would be on a, by request. Um, it's, it's also again, just like abhorrently expensive. So if you want it cool, we can talk about how to pay for it. Um, but yeah, generally speaking, Mogami gold, everything and Nutri connectors for everything. Oh, and I wanted to talk to you guys. Here, I've actually got a sample Nutri connector here, which I just wanted to talk to you about. Uh, Dispatch takes over Twitch with thousands of SM7, SM7B custom cable orders. Dude, um, mini XLR, big XLR, um, Nutri quarter inch. We're going to do instrument and patch cables, everything, dude. It's going to be like legit Mogami quality, um, but also you can sleeve it in... Uh, um, MDPCX as well. So you get custom colors with Mogami cable underneath. Let's do it. <laughs> right? Oh man, I'm so excited. I, like you guys, I've been working on this project for like quite a bit and it's all coming together, supply chain, everything coming together. It's, um, but when balance cables for headphones, so Nyanified, uh, that is a question that I've got. Hmm. How flexy are the XLRs? One second. You guys just chill. We can't see it, but it is rainy day. We're going to open it right now. However, um, give me one second and I'm going to go get, 
I'm going to go get a sample XLR. You, some of you have already seen this, but I'll be right back. So we're gonna come back to rainy day in just a second. Now this is, um, so this is a sample. And the reason why it's wired up like this is there's one end with, um, this is like, a, I can't remember the product code. I'm still learning. Um, but this has got a Nutric Silver and this is Nutric Black. Um, I would love some two pin cables for IMs. Technique, I'm working on it, I'm working on it. I gotta get the, what is it, M, M, MXCC or whatever, or like, I can't remember the name of the connector. I'm learning, I'm still learning. So uh, you can see here. So NCFX and it says Nutric right there, all official, right? Uh, MMCX, that's it, thanks Nyanified. So share, hang on, hang on, hang on. Celebs in the house, celebs in the house. Boom. If you guys don't know Cher, she is um, another, a fellow streamer. Worth checking out, definitely do. And you can see, what does this one say? M, so this is NCMXX, so right here, right? It's got the pins. Uh, and like I said, this is Mogami four core uh, balanced wire. It's got that beautiful, beautiful uh, copper, uh, fully fully spun copper shield on the outside. And this particular one is sleeved in MD uh, PCX Grand Bleu. And it turned out just beautifully um, and sounds great. Yeah, it is kind of cheeky, isn't it? <laughs> Agreed. But here, I wanted to show you something. So this was actually driving me a, a little bit bonkers. Uh, I was just talking to Lady Dispatch about this, like this whole week, she's like sick of hearing about patch and XLR cables, but check this out. Um, so this is, this is basically what you get. So this is the aluminum uh, body. We've got basically a collet and a collet nut. Once again, most cables kind of work the same. And then we've got the, um, the TS, so tip and sleeve. Um, we can, if you guys are interested, I can talk about why it's TS and why it's not TR or why it's not TRRS and all that kind of good stuff. Um, this is not a keyboard cable. This is an audio cable, which is the next, the next area of, uh, of domination. So we're looking at getting into that now. Um, and we have, we have orders already coming in right now. It's all being done through a commission basis. Um, but yeah, so this is good. So what happened here was I had made another cable, uh, patch cord for a guitar. And when I'd put this on, uh, when I'd put the collet nut on the cable and then secured the housing around it, I'll show you, this was like my learning process. And then I put this in like, so, and then I tried to screw this together. What happened was, um, oh, hang on one sec. Let me just take this out for just a moment. And this is going in the top and then this was getting screwed around it. Okay. So when this went together, like, so everything, uh, generally unbalanced cable for instrument. Um, well it's, it's, uh, for a guitar, um, mono is basically all you need, uh, diabolical, unless, um, you're telling me, unless you're telling me you'd like something else, but I'd be interested in the guitar you have. Um, so the, um, the way that this went together, it was basically screwing together fairly well, and then it ended up with this, basically a gap between the housing and the collet. And I'm like, what the heck is going on? It won't close. And I'm like reefing on it, it will not close. Opened it up and I can see that the it's gripping the wire hard, like really, really hard, right? And I'm like, that is messed up. And then uh, I went on Nutrix site. I was looking for assembly instructions. Everything's going on. It's just tip and sleeve. Yep, exactly. Um, and then, um, whoops. 
So I was looking at it, I'm like, something is going on. And then they're in, in their schematic for the assembly instructions, um, there's one bullet point which points at this piece right here. This piece right here. So you see how it's cut right here. There's an extra little piece here, yeah? Okay. Is it harder to make if it's TRS? It's exactly the same. I just need a different um, wire, just different core mango. Uh, if you have a, like, and if you're looking for something in particular, just shoot me a note because it's the same supplier. Like where I get the Mogami wire from is all the same. So you just have to tell me which uh, gauge and whatever else that you're looking for. But what happened here is this, this little extra piece there that is notched actually needs to be broken off. So you peel it back and you can just snap it off. Boom, I just ripped it off. Look at that, wrecked, ruined. But what that does is it pushes the collet further into the housing. Watch this. Just enough, so you can see this is tapered out just a bit. So it pushes it further into the housing, allowing this wider back part to be not filled basically with the back side of the collet. It allows it to be open. And then what that means is when this collet nut screws into the back, it has enough clearance to go in that much further and then it's socketed perfectly closed. The reason why it didn't work is because the wire I was trying to put in exceeded the maximum threshold for this piece when it wasn't clipped. Clip it, seats a little bit further, allows the wire to get pushed in a little bit more, and then the housing closes completely. Genius mechanism, so simple, totally missed it. Um, guilty of not having read the freaking instructions. However, um, now you can put this on here. This uh, piece acts as the collet and the wire shield in one to protect it from the outer housing. Slide this in like so. Uh, like so. Drop this guy in the back. And you're basically good to go. You've got a perfectly sleeved gold Nutric TS connector that will fit up to um, the 7.6 millimeter wire that I need it to fit. So, magnifico. Typical man moment. Yeah, sorry, Nanified. <laughs> sorry to be a complete letdown, but... Yes. Um, ironically, I did read the instructions. I just didn't read that one part. So it was a little bit of a, did you read all the instructions, Geo, or just part of the instructions, right? Like one of those things. Damn it. Okay, fine. Um, additionally, if anyone has a preference, and I apologize for, again, whatever, I also bought um, these, which are from a company called uh, Switch. Hmm, let's see. It's on here. Switchcraft. And these are chrome, fully chrome. Uh, and they also basically work the same. The one difference is the cable. Um, also, you can use TS if you're running. Can you use TS if you're using two pickups? Um, yes, because the electronics still send it to the same jack on the... Uh, on the guitar mango. So you've really only ever got a mono signal coming out. It just, the two pickups is just gonna give you a different um, interference basically from the um, the magnets that are in the pickups and it's just gonna combine into a different, uh, whatchamacallit, um, frequency on the output. Uh, Bongzilla says, Switchcraft has narrower jack, which is better for patch cables. Yeah, so um, this is actually pretty wide, uh, Bongzilla. So this is actually, a, specifically I bought a wider opening to allow for the wire to go all the way through and the difference with this one is it just has this like fiberglass jacket which acts as the shield um, and then you basically can screw the housing onto the end and you just end up with a fully chromed out version of the same thing rather than black or silver and black or whatever right but uh, yeah this is also going to work out really nicely um, I don't have a preference but I'm still learning what people want or like or know and from what I've heard, at least, Nutric is going to be the more recognizable brand um, from a, like, you know, premium. 
Ah, so Bongzilla, I also have 90 degree and pancake jacks inbound. So anything you want that Nutrig makes, I have access to. Um, just This is like the first little box of connectors that I've got. I have a big shipment coming uh, Tuesday, which is gonna be for um, uh, basically for the, whatchamacallit? Looking for a base sleeve that has a navy-like color. Um, Electric blue is pretty navy. Should we do it together? Let's check it out. Um, let's do it together. Materials, sleeving, para. So if you're looking at para, um, what I would do is I would just look for blue and we'll just do a quick peek. Um, so electric blue is pretty navy. There's also, I believe it's called like navy, like literally um, navy blue. Where is it? Royal blue with reflective. If you guys ever try getting reflective para, it is not joking around ref reflective, like super, super reflective, like any light. And it's like, it's so bright. It's like super bright. Um, I think I actually have a picture. Yeah, so I'm thinking electric blue is probably your best bet um yeah I'm, I'm guessing that's probably your best bet let's take a peek here uh close this up all of these swatches um all of this paracord is from rw rope so no joke it's not uh it's not like a secret um it's all rw rope and the reason why i like rw is because they have a huge number of colors uh, the, oh yeah. Um, so if you're looking at a website, looking for a base sleeve, the only reason why I was looking at para, um, one is just because, um, usually I like base sleeves as para. Uh, there's lots of cable makers that will use MDPCX as, um, oh, this could be like a 